Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Financial Confessions. This is a very exciting and unique episode for us because it is featuring a type of expert we've never had on the show before and one that I'm personally very, very intrigued by. But before I introduce you guys to her, I wanted to talk to you really quickly about our beloved sponsor with whom we make every episode of The Financial Confessions, Intuit. If you haven't heard of Intuit, you have almost certainly heard of some of their amazing products. They make things like TurboTax, QuickBooks, Mint, Turbo, basically all of the tools you need to keep your financial life organized and efficient and working toward the goals that you want to reach. I personally have been using Mint to track my budget and manage all of my spending and work toward my goals for over seven years, well before I ever started the financial diet or even really got interested in money. And it's one of the first things that made me feel like I could have some control over my financial life. And right now, one of the most valuable things I think is to feel like you have control over something and can be certain about something in a time when everything feels a little bit chaotic. So for me and my husband and all the kind of upheaval we've been living recently, it has been really reassuring to have that. Um, But I'll talk to you guys a little bit more uh, later in the show about some of the specific products that Intuit creates. But in the meantime, if you cannot wait to get started, check out the link in our description or our show notes. As promised, we have a guest here today that I could not be more excited about because it is a topic you guys love, request highly, but we haven't featured yet. It is organization expert, Jolyn Polisek. Jolyn (laughs) Polisek. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good. Thank you for guiding me through your last name. It's all right. It's not the first time. So you are an organization expert. What does that mean? Um, so I'm a professional home organizer, so I basically go into people's homes and help them figure out how to like optimize the function and flow of their space. Everything from kitchens, bathrooms, playrooms, storage rooms, attics, basements, garages, um, entryways, any space that someone's like, this space is stressing me out. I'm like, I got it. Let's walk through it. Yeah. Very cool. And what is the name of your business? Sage Organization and Design. Very cool. And so do you do you do some of the design elements as well, like the decor after the fact? A little bit, yeah. So my mom is an interior designer, and so I kind of grew up in that world of like knowledge of use of color and texture and use of space and a, like a little bit of feng shui and balance and things like that. And so when I started organizing for people, every once in a while, someone would be like, can you help me pick a chair? And I'm like... Yeah, I can do that. Can you help me pick some pillows? Yeah, I can do that. So like nothing, I'm not a contractor. I don't like move walls or anything like that. But if someone's like, hey, I want to organize my space, but also make it really aesthetically pleasing and beautiful on top of that, like that's what I can bring a space to that next level. That's very cool. We, um, you know, it's interesting because I feel like this past year, obviously with like the phenomenon of like Marie Kondo and all that stuff, there's a, I'm sure it's been good for business for you. Great. Um, (laughs) but there's also just, I think been such a heightened awareness for us on the financial end, because we do talk a lot about, you know, it's easy to think of money in a vacuum, but ultimately money is just in many cases, especially on the spending. end, it's just a culmination of, your decision making, what you deem Mm -hmm. important, what you're collecting, what you're, you know, not spending, like it's all a sort of a a collection of decisions. And I think a lot of people tend to think of things like their home as very distinct from their money, but they're very much one in the same. hundred percent. So what are some of the like fundamental kind of rules that you give people for, um, picking out what, should what deserves space in their home Mm -hmm. and and how to use it yeah my first kind of big fundamental rule whenever i start working with a client is figuring out what's serving them and what's not serving them right like starting with the great purge um and a way i kind of like sit with my clients and go through literally item by item by item and it's figuring out if things are serving them physically, like, do you use this actual physical item? Do you use that table? Do you use that sweater? Is it physically serving you? But also can things serve you emotionally? People have emotional connections to a teddy bear, to uh, a China set that their grandmother gave them, you know, like there's different ways for things to serve you. And it's going through and figuring out what is still serving you and what isn't serving you and figuring out how to let go of those things that are literally just taking up space that a lot of times people don't even realize are kind of just sitting there taking up space. Like 
if you have a set of skis from a trip that you went on five years ago and you like really want to go skiing again one time, but you have to like, you know that you've never gone skiing since then and you're probably not going to go skiing again. And being a New Yorker, that like chunk in the closet that it's taking up that you're like, oh, I hope I'm going to go skiing again. And like, you just have to have that conversation and like be realistic about what you use in your life. What is, are those skis like really serving you or is it right. like st strictly aspirational, which is like fine. Um, but you have to have like that real conversation with what serves purpose and what is just taking up space and collecting dust. Um, so once we've gone through that and that can take a lot of time, some people can make like snap decisions and New Yorkers are actually better about making the snap decisions. Like, yes, I need this. I need this. No, that can go. That can go. And I work with a lot of people in Wisconsin and some people in Jersey, um, that really are like, well, when my grandmother passed, I inherited the, this. And it's like, okay, let's talk about it, girl. Let's talk <laughs> it out. Like, I'm here for you. Like, you're like a therapist a little oh. bit. 100% like, yes, which is, it's a real thing because people have very real emotional connections to inanimate objects. That is a very real thing. There's a reason why people are hoarders. Right. Um, that's a very deep, which I, I don't normally work with hoarders because you like, that's a very real psychological issue. Right. I'm just not. It's not your, like, not it's above your pay, pay grade. 100%. 100% yeah. above my pay grade. I'm I'm not equipped to like genuinely help those people in the way that they need to be helped. Sometimes landlords need to be involved, like family needs to be involved, police need sometimes like it's like a whole big thing. Right. So that I if I that comes up, I would kind of pass it along to I would say here's some more resources for you that are better equipped to handle it. Um but the more average person, it's more of just a conversation of like yeah, going through things. I just Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 it's good. I, you know, I imagine people must cry a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, some, I, I haven't not come across criers. I've definitely, yeah, I've heard a lot of like, yeah, there's a lot of sad stories that come up because those emotional attachments are real um, and yeah. helping people through those that process of the letting go, like it's not just letting go of the thing, it's letting go of that part of your life. And it's, I kind of help people through the process of realizing that just because you have, you let go of the thing doesn't mean that that isn't still in your heart. Right. You know, like, yeah, I, I find that I, we talk a lot at TFD about the idea of spending with the intention of becoming a different person, hmm. of being a different person. You know, you're the sort of person who acts. Um, mm -hmm. And I think in a, in a lot of ways, and I, I, this has happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to everyone, when you are throwing away a certain thing or getting rid of a certain thing, you're kind of admitting to yourself that, that you're not that person, that yeah. you can't hold that mental image of yourself, whether it's right. the person who's like always maybe going on their next ski trip, even though it's been five winters or like yeah. it's, I have a pair of tap shoes in my closet that I'm like, I went to like two tap dance classes right. and then like they're collecting dust. But yep. I, part of me is like, I want to hold on to the possibility that I could always still be that person. Um, and I think one thing that's important to remember about buying things is that if you really are going to do something and you want to do something, you're going to find a way to get started with or without that big object. 100%. You're going to find a way. Right. And so wait to buy the object until you're already doing the thing. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, so what are some of the like most common mistakes that you see people making when it comes to how they're organizing, what they're keeping? Um... People hold on to a lot of things out of guilt. Mm. Um, like what kind of things? Things that have been given to them. Oh, God. Gifts. People hold on to gifts because they're given to them and they're like, well, you know, like my boss gave this to me and I have to have it because oh I, might, I might host my boss for a dinner and if they come over and they see that that thing isn't there, like I'm basically fired. Like that's dark. I mean, well, I mean, that might be an exaggeration <laughs> a little bit, but, but like... But like, that's a real thing or like, <laughs> oh, my best friend gave me this sweater and like, it wasn't necessarily my style, but they gave it to me and I like have to wear them or my aunt gave me this thing, right. you know, like it's out of guilt. And my whole philosophy that I try and like help people through the process of understanding is the joy in the giving of a gift is in the giving, not in the gift. Right. 
And it's that exchange of that moment of like the opening and the like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to give this to you. Oh, thank you so much. I love you. I love you too. Like, this is great. That's the gift. Right. That's, it's that moment of celebration and the joy. It's not about the thing. Right. Can you go back and remember every single gift you've given someone? Like, no. It's, no. It's, and, and I would like to. <laughs> well, that's a whole nother issue. <laughs> um, no. You but, know, but. Yeah, no, that's totally true. Yeah. So helping people through that process of coming to terms with the fact that it's okay to let go of things um, is a big part of that first step of the purge. Yeah. Um, and also helping people realize that like, just because you don't love something doesn't mean someone else won't love it. Right. That give it a home. Yeah. Give it a home. Find someone who will actually love it and who will love that sweater from your auntie Tilly. Like, (laughs) you know, like toss it to housing works, give it to goodwill, like ask a friend, you know, like someone will be able to get use out of that. And that's, way more exciting than it collecting dust in your closet and taking Absolutely. up space out of guilt. My mother-in-law has this, um, she doesn't speak English, so I'm safe. <laughs> no, my mother-in-law has this, uh, gift that she got a couple years ago from a friend. And I use that loosely because what friend would give this to you, but she uses it out of guilt and I'm not exaggerating. It is a probably maybe like two foot or three foot long, foot and a half or so tall (laughs) wrought iron or like cast iron decorative frog. (laughs) How do you even use that? What is the use? Wait, it gets so much worse. That you fill with candles and light. (laughs) A fire frog. It's a fire frog. She has a huge... It literally looks like a demon. (laughs) That's... Are on that fire. is a gift. That is the gift that keeps on giving right there. It's the most that is a joy. Atrocious thing I've ever seen in my what? life. And it's not even like kind of like chic and sculptural. It's like it, it right. looks like There's something. Potential. Yeah, no, no, it looks like something from Hobby Lobby, but like Amazing. Hobby Lobby no in hell. Lobby. Like it's it's so funny. But she every time I see that, like it's so comically ugly that it's not even that awkward to be like, what's the deal with that right. frog? Right. <laughs> She's honestly like... This is a prime example. She's like, my friend gave it to me and she comes over. I can't not right. have the frog. Like, the frog has to be part of the theme now. Like, she's gotten other frog things. No! And she doesn't like frogs. But she's like now building off of that frog. She's like it's supporting the bad. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. Anyway, I'm going to send her... Great example. Box you up and send you to France because she needs help with that. Yeah. That's too funny. Um, So we're obviously all spending a considerable amount of time in our homes these days. Yes. Do you (laughs) feel as someone who I imagine has quite an organized, optimized, and well-decorated home, do you feel that that has really worked to your advantage in this time? Oh my gosh. Yes. 110, like 10,000%. Living in New York in the best of circumstances, like you should have, it's my belief at least, that you should have a space that makes you feel comfortable and you can like block out the like chaoticness of New York city because yeah, like New York in the best of circumstances is wild and crazy and like stressful and bananas and having a space now more than ever that makes you feel relaxed and comfortable and safe is paramount. Um, we're not leaving our little like cubes of comfort right now. And so to have a space that's optimized and like just basic like functionality, a lot of people don't have in this city because they just don't know how to do it. Um, That it's so, so, so critical in a time like this when like everything, the world around us is literally swirling and like creating a space that makes you just go, (sighs) yes, everything's okay in my, in my like safe space. It's, it's so important. People live in some really questionable living situations in this city. I've worked in a lot of them. Oh my God. So (laughs) that was going to be why I have a career. (laughs) So I'm a nosy Nelly. Please. I want to hear about some of the really, really questionable stuff you've seen in your days going into Um, people's homes. I mean, I've seen all the drugs, all the sex toys. I've seen... Drugs? They leave the drugs out for the organizer? I I mean, yes, it's shocking. Maybe it's like a little subtle enticement, like you want a party, girl? (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen some things where people like I've worked with, there were, this happened twice where people hired me to come and help organize their clothes. Great. Love it. Closets are one of my favorite spaces to organize. And I walked in and they literally just had a pile of clothes on the ground. They're like, I just, I don't understand. Like, why can't I keep this organized? I'm like, well, <laughs> pile of clothes on the ground. Yes. And I'm like, well, you need a dresser. Uh, you need like a thing that holds things. A container of sorts. Like a container of sorts. Anything. Boxes stacked would do. Like literally, it doesn't need to be fancy. Like you need a thing to hold things. Like it's not. That's crazy. And they literally just like, I just don't understand why I can't keep it organized. I'm like, so you don't understand why you can't keep that pile of crap on the ground organized? Oh my God. Like literally people like... And I work, I mean, I work with some amazing humans, doctors, lawyers, professors, like very high powered, educated, intelligent, like wonderful, respected, like contributing members of society that just like don't have that very specific skill set that is organizing. Like it's just such a weird niche thing that I just have this like weird tick in my brain that I happen to be really good at it. Um, that just because you can't like you can be really amazing at your job and be a wonderful intelligent human and you can't keep your stuff organized for shit like sorry um great shit um yeah so that always kind of blows my mind when Mm. i walk into these and like beautiful homes one of the coolest parts about my job is seeing incredible real estate like Mm. i get to see some beautiful homes in new york city which is like super fun because it's different every day and it's in different parts of the city every day. And it's, it's, you know, every, every space is a new puzzle. Um, but it never ceases to amaze me when I meet these like wonderful on point, intelligent humans and their closet looks like the Tasmanian devil, like vomited in it. And I'm just like, (laughs) how, what, how, what? I don't like, I don't, I just don't understand how that doesn't create such a high level of day-to-day chaos it does yeah it does does. that is why I have a career because people people hire me when they get to a certain breaking point yeah when they're just like I can't I can't take it anymore like I can't handle the chaos in my own home and yeah it's it's really interesting like I I've been working uh to finish up a few rooms we moved into our current apartment in November I finished most of the rooms right away um as is my nature but we were just finishing (laughs) The uh, we have a, our bedroom and then a guest bedroom slash office and so we were fin- I was finishing those and um, I it's funny because although I knew it in the moment our bedroom was a space of like great anxiety for me okay. I hated being in there I hated Why? like well because it was just very unfinished um, sure I wasn't at all like what I wanted for it it was like I wasn't giving it love it like was it needed to be purged it had mm. like. It was just kind of, it was the last room on the list. So it was where a lot of stuff was going like, and it's not a big room. So it was one of those things where, you know, there was a, 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 a a space in my apartment where I always kept the door closed and I Mm. felt bad when I went in there and I felt better when I left it. Guilt. And yeah. And I, and it's funny because when I, when I, I, and I'm not totally done, I have one thing left to finish in it, but when I mostly finished it, it's, I sit in there now. I like to sit in there now and I feel good. And there's now no one room in the house that feels, um, you know, negative to me. And I think when I, when I know people in my own life who live with every room like that forever, basically, where it's oh. like they have like, you know, frames leaned up against the wall for four years so that they people. never what hang. Is that? I'm like, honey, it's a nail. Like it's <laughs> not even like I can do that. Like yeah. and or they'll have, you know, rooms that they just like throw stuff into and close the door. They have you know, yeah. they have these spaces yeah. that are so That's a um, real thing. Yeah, they're really unconsidered. And I'm like, how is this not just kind of like bearing down on your life twenty four seven? And they're like, right. oh it is, but I just don't like being home. Which inevitably for most people translates to being out all the time, spending right. money all the time. Totally. And feeling like you need to escape the feeling of your home. Yeah. Who could live like that? People do. So many people do. So many people do. So many people. Why? It's a choice. I, have no idea. I don't and people a lot of people are like, Well, I just can't help it. I can't well the stuff just piled up. 
I'm like, well, you made the choice to put yeah, like, that Yeah, who piled there. it up? Someone break into your house and pile it up? Sure didn't. They sure didn't. <laughs> like, did the clutter fairy come and just, like, take a crap in your extra room? <laughs> no. I, you, that's, that's one you. of the things, though. Like, I know a lot of people covet a big house, but I feel like I'm... What would I do with more rooms but just throw crap in them? Totally. I'm like kind yeah, of excited I would like to have a craft this. room. I'm not going to lie. That would be fun. A craft but, you room know, that's would be good. <laughs> what is like a trend? And we So for the record, guys, we did ask you for your questions for Joel and we have many and I will get to them. But one of my questions is like, what is a like decor um, or home design trend on Instagram, Pinterest, influencers, whatever that you're like sick of or don't like or like are over? Oh gosh. I don't really... It's maybe not a great answer to your question, but I don't really pay too much attention to like what's trending. I'm much more interested in what's functional mm. for organizing because, well, there's, there is a really big, like the big, huge spending on the closets. Like that's, I totally get it. Having the huge built in like custom master closet that like if you want to spend that money great like live your best life like you're speaking greek to me now people have closets you can walk into yeah it's a thing I, i've heard of it's a unicorn in new <laughs> york city my bedroom but... literally doesn't have a closet i have a wardrobe <sighs> i have a wardrobe and a bookshelf it's very functional great and that it. see that is so much more important to me um the the obsession with like the super fancy built-ins um are they're great, but they're not completely necessary. Mm. Um, that's I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions about organizing is that you have to spend a ton of money mm. to be able to be organized. You have to have the big fancy closet. You have to have the built-ins. You have to have like the pantry. The pan yes, the fancy pantry and all the stuff. And it's not you don't if you want to spend that money and you have that expendable income to do that and that like makes your heart happy absolutely do that like there I'm not saying that that's a bad thing but it's not completely necessary um being organized is a choice it's a lifestyle um it's making the choice to take that sweater off the pile wear the sweater when you take the sweater off fold the sweater and put the sweater back mm. it's it's as simple as that it's a one in one out situation that if you break it down to like this one thing, just my keys. I want to keep my keys organized. Like every day when you, you have to have your keys in your hand to get in your door. So you have them instead of throwing them in your purse and then having to like rummage through your purse every day, have a little, put a nail like in the wall next to your door that instead of throwing them in that bag that you have to spend seven minutes searching for, put it on the wall every day when you walk in. It's so simple, just one in, and then you never have to spend time looking for your keys ever again for the rest of your life. Right. Like it's so simple. And if you think about organization in that way, breaking it down to just one thing at a time, it's like, it's it was such an aha moment for me of realizing that like, you don't have to like think about it big picture think about it it's just like one thing at a time I guess that kind of circled away from your like what's the trend no I think question, but I think but that, that trend of having really big complicated solutions to yeah. what should be doable problems I think exactly yeah like when when I moved into an apartment where my bedroom didn't have a closet I was like okay well I only have one season of clothes in my room at a time and the rest is in storage which Fine. is honestly better anyway, because I used to have to like be filtering through my summer stuff, looking for to a winter get to your dress. winter stuff. Yes. Um, so I, I think I definitely agree with that. On the opposite side, though, you have like hyper minimalism, which I think is like somewhat going out now. Like I think we've had our like yeah. minimalist moment. <laughs> yeah. like, the one thing that would always drive me crazy on like the minimalist like organization blogs is when people like gr like women usually would have just like you know the like clothing rack wardrobe yeah where it's like just a rack in yeah. your bedroom with like your capsule wardrobe on right. it and the shoes and I'm like any person living in this to any degree of practicality this would be an abomination every right. day like it would be so messy and gross yeah and that is the kind of thing I think people often will go between extremes of kind of like fetishizing yeah. organization and being yeah. hyper curated and uh -huh. hyper sort of like how perfect can I get it or like completely neglect it and live in chaos. Yeah. 
I agree. What is something that you find when you're, for example, like, let's say, I, mean, I assume even though you don't pay too much attention to trends that you do use social media and you see yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, of, sure. um, what's going on. What are some things that, um, people might see. And I think a lot of times for our audience, because they're very, you know, they're budget conscious and they want to make sure that they're not overspending to get to something. And a lot of, you know, the design blogs, the decor blogs, they can feel very aspirational. Totally. And I mean, quite frankly, a lot of that stuff is really expensive or it's gifted 100%. or all of that stuff. What are some easy things that almost anyone could recreate at any budget that will help a home feel more rich, more intentional, more beautiful, all of those things? Um, I think it's, I love to look at those, those blogs that are like, yeah, the million dollar homes that have the huge walk-in closets, looking at that and kind of breaking it down into not just the, the closet itself, but saying like, okay, how is that functioning? How does that work for that person? Why is that working? And taking away like the little things. Right. Um, and if you see like in a beautiful thing of like, huge shelves, floor to ceiling, like, okay, well maybe I can't afford to have 35 shelves, floor to ceiling of this beautiful natural wood. And that's going to cost $4,000 to have that shelf. You can get two shelves from target for 25 bucks each. They're going to kind of give you that feeling right. of that. It's going to, yeah, like accomplish that idea and that feeling without spending the $4,000 on that huge natural shelf. It's kind of seeing what they're going for, seeing what they're trying to mm. accomplish, and then seeing if you can find that at Goodwill. See if you can find that at Target. See if you can find that at Walmart. Like going to those places that are much more attainable and seeing if you can break it down um, and make it much more simpler and streamlined. Um, but kind of get like the essence. But of get what the it essence is. of yeah. it. Yeah. I feel like one big thing that a lot of people have to get over, especially in cities, is get comfortable with mounting stuff on walls. Using like, your vertical space. It's crazy. It is my number it's one. Huge. Yes. After, well, number one is purge. Purge, purge, purge. <laughs> get rid of everything. Not everything. I'm not into minimal, minimalism. That's actually not my thing. But <laughs> get rid of the things that aren't serving you. Um, but number two is use your vertical space every inch. Like even just looking around here, you have things up on the wall. You have things like hanging. Um, you have art up, you've got, you know, shelves that are going up and using that vertical space right. on the walls, um, in the windows, like try to think of, so when I go into a space, I see it as like a 3d Tetris board. Mm. Um, and I kind of see like, okay, there's a chunk on the ceiling. That's like this long, thin space. Could I put an extra shelf up there that would, we can store some shoes up there that are right. out of season. I look and I see above the doorway, there's just open unused space. Can you put a shelf there to put some sweaters when you're not using them? Right. Can you lift your bed? And cause there's tons of space above your bed. Can you lift your bed and use that negative space under your bed to put some drawers for seasonal items? It's all about using that space. That's the negative space that is just breathing room, which like, yes, we all need breathing room in New York city. Like we need as many inch square inches of breathing room as you can possibly right. get. But you also have to be realistic and like, okay, if you want those skis, you are going to need to figure out how to like mount them on your ceiling. Like my fiance has this super fancy bike because he loves cycling, but we do not have anywhere to put a bicycle a mounted rack thing. So we put hooks in the ceiling and oh, we wow. flipped it up and it's hanging from the ceiling above his desk. Wow. So it's like art. Yeah. Cause it's like this beautiful, fancy bike, but it's also not taking up floor space, you know? So I'm like, okay, if you want that bike, it's, it's, it's going, going up on there. the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even if something aesthetically is not really my taste, I always love when something feels very intentional mm. and it feels like it really serves a purpose. Yeah. Um, and mounted things, things that are in the wall, you always know, man, you had to get out a stud finder. You had to like get <laughs> make a an effort drill bit. Like, yeah, this was a day of work for uh -huh. you. Like, and if it's well mounted, like that is a, it will that serve is a you. beautiful piece of work. And like, 100%. so you, you don't make that decision lightly yeah. and it always looks kind of thought through and considered. And I think mm -hmm. that that, in addition to adding such functionality, it automatically makes a space feel very like 
intentional and, and intentional. Totally. Yeah, totally. When you have uh, a person who feels like they're, they've purged, they don't have, you know, too much stuff that's kind of weighing them down, but they don't really know what's next. Mm -hmm. Like they feel organized but they want the space to feel better and nicer, but they're not going to go out and hire a decorator. They don't have a ton of money to buy new stuff. What are some good next things to do after the purge? I think it's about figuring out, like once you've figured out, okay, these are all things that are serving me. These are all things that I do use. Then it's about figuring out what things you use the most. Mm. Um, Because I have sweaters that I, you know, I have my 12 sweaters but I definitely have my six sweaters that are like my go to. It's the A team. Yeah. You have your A team clothes. Yes, 100%. And everyone has that. And that's okay. Like, if it, if it isn't overflowing your space, like, it's okay. I like to like change it up once in a while. Like, we should all be able to do that, not into capsule wardrobes. And <laughs> I'm trying to get into them, but, but continue. But I like, I like being able to express myself through my clothes. Right, like, it's, yeah. a, I enjoy that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so I think it's figuring out how to organize in a way that makes those, um, things that you know that you use the most, the most easily accessible, right. Um, making those at an arm's reach where if you know that you're, you have those six sweaters that are like your go-to sweaters, putting those on a lower shelf and putting those like second tier sweaters that are like either for a special event or seasonal or, you know, this, that, or the other thing, like my, my, my Christmas ugly sweater, like I'm keeping that sweater. I'm not getting rid of my ugly sweater, but I'm also not wearing it every day. So that goes on like the top shelf. So it's figuring out what things are that a team and making them the most accessible. Um, that's kind of the next step of organization for me. That's great. Yeah, man. Now that you've like referenced our space, I'm like ready for you to drag it. (laughs) So we're talking a lot today about how to get organized in your life. And one of the things that has been so important to TFD was getting and staying extremely organized in our finances. As a lot of you probably know already, we applied for and received the PPP loan, which was huge and amazing. But in order to do that, we had to provide a ton of documentation and reports about our company, you know, payroll, key expenses, that kind of stuff. And we were able to very quickly and easily access all of those reports because we have been using QuickBooks to do our small business bookkeeping for years now. And we already had that stuff at the ready. QuickBooks is small business bookkeeping uh, software that is perfect for keeping all of your various elements of business, financial health, easy to access and well-organized. You have a neat little dashboard every morning when you log on and you can check, you know, outstanding invoices, who needs to pay you, who you need to pay. You can look at payroll. You can look at your P&Ls. Do anything that you need to do to keep on top of your business expense management, as well as just the ins and outs of all of your business's financial health. I could not recommend QuickBooks more in all seriousness. We've been using it for years even well before we worked with Intuit and it has been a lifesaver in this time. And do remember that even if you are just freelance or a small business of one, QuickBooks is still for you because, hey, freelancing is just being a small business with one person. So important to keep in mind. If you've been thinking about using a better system for keeping all of your books clean, I highly recommend you check out QuickBooks at the link in our description or the show notes. So Jolyn, the time has come. We have ample questions from our audience. We, they are hungry for the organization knowledge and they're ready. Can a Roomba replace a normal vacuum? No. No. Roombas are like little robot cats. They just kind of like push stuff around and <laughs> play on your floor. Like, <laughs> and they also, they can't like really get into like the deep carpet. I mean, right. I don't want to upset Roomba, but I just... Buy Roomba sponsorship. That was never (laughs) happening. (laughs) I'm just... I'm a detail cleaner. Right, right. Like... You clean the baseboards? I I do. No, it's good. You should. I do. I do. Sorry. New York is gross. Not frequently, I'll be honest. Not frequently. Also, I feel like... I don't know about you, but I live in a building from 1909. It never looks clean. No matter how much I clean, it always... Like, there's like... No, totally. I mean, because also the apartment is like lightly crumbling at all times. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, God. Like, like I I have plaster on all of my walls. Like, I have floors that are a hundred years old. Like it's never going to look perfect. Yeah. No, for sure. You definitely have to like let some of that go moving to New York. Yeah. Um, that level of cleanliness perfection, but also yeah. Roomba just, 
I mean, it's fine for like... It's like smooshes stuff around. Kind of smooshes stuff around. Yeah, I'm not, it's not my jam. I will say though, and this is a controversial thing, I do not have a vacuum. I sweep and mop and I machine wash my rugs. Oh, okay. I only buy machine washable rugs. I have so, a dog yeah. and also mm. yeah, I don't make my guests take off their shoes in the home because mm. I'm like, you came with a look. You can have the look. Yeah. Um, only occasionally. Like if the one time I'll ask guests yes. to take their shoes off uh is like when there's like salt on the yeah. ground from like because it really fucks up the hardwood for sure but for the most part like if i have like a dinner party or if i'm having oh like, yeah you if know you're a like bunch hosting. of people over like if i'm having like an overnight guest of course they take the shoes off like <laughs> we do at the shoe thing right but uh, any okay a so anyway people are walking around with their shoes um but also i have a dog and like yeah. spills so yeah, yeah. i machine washable rugs to me are a revelation 100%. i like love throwing that bad boy in the machine yeah. um but yeah, I just sweep and mop. Yeah. Um, I, I rent a vacuum cleaner occasionally to okay. like vacuum out my upholstery and the mm, like any yeah. cleaners, but you know. Yeah. I mean, you're not not cleaning. Yeah. Like I clean. you're, you're cleaning. I clean. Um, not as much as I should. That's okay. I am such a chronic apologizer about homes. How do you feel about that? Do you ever apologize when people are in your home? Like, sorry about that? I don't, it's going to make me sound like a dick, but like, I don't really need to. Damn. I just <laughs> you're that on your game. I it's become such a lifestyle. Oh my god. That I well also there's very few people that just pop in. Like, oh, we're talking not about popper inners. Like, yeah, I'm talking about like when people come over and it's like not exactly the way I would want it. I just I've created such a functional system for myself, and it's become so ingrained in me that like. Things just, it's like there's magnets. Things just go back where they are supposed to go. Like so once you create that system, it becomes like fun. Mm. And like, it feels really good to be organized. Like it feels much better than being not organized. How do I tackle that chair that collects everything? <laughs> <sighs> the chair that collects everything. There's a couple of the different chair. things that you can kind of do. One, get rid of the chair. No. Like, we're not getting rid of the chair. Listen. We're not doing it. <laughs> that chair's being a dick. You get rid of that chair. Um, no, I mean, like, that's a real thing. Like, eliminate the problem. Mm. You know, if it's a problem, eliminate the problem. But if, you, if you're like, well, I have two chairs in my home, and, like, I need a chair, Jolyn, fine. Keep your chair. Um, it's about, if you can't eliminate the problem, eliminate the bad habit. Right. It's... No one is like forcing you to come in and put all your crap down on that chair. You're making that choice to like be lazy and pile all that crap on your chair. So instead of at the end of the week having to spend 45 minutes like clearing off your chair, if you take 45 seconds every single day when you walk in the apartment to put your coat on the hook, to put your shoes back in their place, to put your bag back on its spot, instead of just throwing stuff down because you're like, oh, I just can't possibly spend 45 seconds right now. Well, you probably can spend 45 seconds, you know? It's, and then you don't have to spend the 45 minutes at the end of the week. It's breaking that habit. Um, that's just, it's the choice. You ha I'm sorry, but you have to like, the three things have to be in your entry. Um, even if it's a tiny apartment, three things have to be in your entry. Go on. Shoe rack. Yes. Uh, and you can get it for like 15 bucks on Amazon. Do not say you can't get one. You can uh, even get stacking tower ones that take up like eight inches that yes. are completely vertical. Yes. You don't need a super huge wide yes. space. You can get the ones that have those like doors that like pull, like they like yes. rotate out kind of. Ikea. Yeah. Amazing. Cheap. Shoe rack. Coat rack. I yes. prefer wall mounted, the long one that goes along the wall. Got it. Hang up a bunch yep. of coats. Don't can, get those standing coat racks. They always no, they like end up way oversized and they take up so much space so and much they're space. ugly. Um, no one has room for that. And then some kind of a like male keys, yep. face mask now, <sighs> gloves. <laughs> like, true. You know, that those are also things. umbrellas probably, but like some yeah. kind of, we, uh, yes. we don't have any space for like a console table, so we mm -hmm. have mounted, but like yeah. those three things, you yes. will never leave shit all over the house again. Done. 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 It's that simple. It's setting up those systems that eliminate the problem in the first place. You've created a place for, like you've, you've created a home for your jacket. You've right. created a home for your shoes. You've created a home for your keys and for your mask. Like, 
literally put a nail in the wall. Like no one's asking you to spend a thousand dollars on Fight club energy of that. <laughs> like bam, done. Problem <laughs> solved. Like, yeah, it's way easier than you think. I would also yeah. say I have a chair in my bedroom that was like quickly becoming the like everything chair. Mm-hmm. I, put a, I put a throw pillow on it. So it like takes up the vast majority of the room. On the and chair. in that way you eliminated the problem. Uh, I still like, well, sometimes put things on it, but I can not fit as you much. You eliminated so, like, half of the problem. Yeah. Like I took up some space. <laughs> Yeah. And mama loves a throw pillow. Okay. Oh, who doesn't? Uh, how do I organize large kitchen appliances in a small kitchen? Get rid of the large kitchen appliances. I know. Like, what do you have? What are what we talking? You... A stand mixer? Crock pots. Like, everybody's got a crock pot. Well, not everybody's got a crock pot. I just got a crock pot. Um, but yeah, it's like the crock pots, the stand mixers. Like, have a conversation with yourself about how often you're like, actually using Mm -hmm. those things like if you're betty crocker and you're like legit baking cakes every day then like i guess that stand-up mixer gets a place on your counter um but if you're more like me and you bake a cake like once a year maybe you can sell that and get all of that money back because they are wildly expensive and get a little hand mixer that can be broken apart put on a shelf at the top where it's a lesser used item. So it's up and away and it's taking up way less space. Like it's just about really being honest with yourself about, are you really using that item? And does it, does it earn that space on your countertop? Like my coffee pot has earned its place on my countertop. You know what I mean? It gets used multiple times a day and it will never be moved, you know? But I'm like, that's useful to me. Like, but that stand mixer just, it hasn't earned its place. No. And if I may pipe in, I'm not an organization expert, but I keep chiming in. I will say also, uh, Blender to me is the number one culprit of like things people keep on the counter. It's like, <laughs> yeah. how often are you using that Blender, buddy? How often Probably are you using not. that? Probably not. Also, very, very, very few things that you can do with, uh, that you can only do with a Blender that couldn't be solved with some combination of a an immersion blender, which is a stick, or one of those little tiny Cuisinarts yes. for like spices and stuff. Yes. Come on, get it together. Do you really need a blender? Also, people get those insane Vitamix blenders that that blend so fast, oh. they heat the soup up <laughs> while they're blending. That's wild. But you like, that? if you get the Vitamix, get rid of everything yeah. else. You get a Vitamix and nothing else. Right. <laughs> Also, lastly, I will say I do have some things that I consider frivolous, but I love anyway. Um, totally. Like my fondue pot and um, love it. Nice life. Like twice a year fondue night. What a night. But either mount some shelves right. and they each get their own little shelf or put them on top of your cabinets. That's yeah. where we have like our- 100%. Or like other stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you use a planner slash notebook organizer slash bullet journal? I do not. Good. <laughs> no, End kidding. of conversation. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, um, I put everything in my phone. If yeah. I were to lose my phone, I would basically just jump off a bridge. It's not in the cloud. I would not jump off a bridge because it is in the cloud. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> I would not jump off a yes, bridge. No, um, don't jump off, off bridges if you lose your planner, please. Um, <laughs> it it is all in the cloud, so like fine. But yeah, I it, it digital. Every like, why not use the tools? A lot of it's people thing that notebook culture. I know. And that's fine. Like <laughs> she's if that's, feeling attacked. Yeah. No. I, well, I will actually say just since the quarantine started, I've started journaling for the first time Same. in like 15 years. Haven't journaled. Um, I just really thought it was imp- like, what a time to be alive. You know, yeah. like it's pretty freaking wild. And to have a handwritten account of this time and like the day to day things that are happening. Um, so something like that, where you're like really expressing yourself and like having those memories, that's very different to me than having just like a daily, Oh, check this off the list. Check this off the list. When, if it's just like a calendar and account of your appointments and things like that, it's so much more, optimal to me to have it all in one place in my teeny tiny like master computer in my pocket like why not use that tool if you have it available to you instead of having to lug a a huge planner around they take up space they're heavy they kill trees yeah I don't know I'm really into the digital when it comes I'm not actually super technology like technologically advanced I'm not great with technology except for using my calendar on my phone that I have like 
nailed it. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. It's one thing that I'm like, it's just, it's just so much easier. Do you use a specific app? I just use the Google, the one that's on your iPhone. Notes? Um, yes, I use, I use Notes. Notes does more than you think day. it does. Notes does a lot, actually. Oh. I also use voice memos a lot. I'm like one oh. of those crazy people who leaves herself voice memos. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Oh, do you have a junk drawer slash catch all drawer? I do have a junk drawer. It's probably the least junky drawer. Oh my I God, <laughs> enough. What is this? What's in it? <laughs> but I mean, so I have those like, does it have little dividers in it? Oh my God, it does. No, that's not a junk drawer. It does. Stop co-opting <laughs> junk drawer. I love a good junk drawer. I have a junk drawer that has all my junk in it. It's got the like random like screwdriver and tape and pens. Does it and- have sauce packets? No, those are in my fridge. In a can- What can- kind of junk drawer is container. this if it doesn't have sauce packets? I mean, I have the sauce packets. They're just in a different home. Um, to each his own. But um, <laughs> I like to keep them nice and cold. Cold you know? sauces? Yeah. Really? Yeah, <laughs> like I what, do. Like what sauces? I like cold ketchup. I like cold sriracha packets. I like... Wow. Cold soy sauce packets. Cold soy sauce. I do. I do. I now, like it this cold is where and I stand by it. Interesting because it <laughs> mutes the flavor. I enjoy it. We digress. So tell Fair. us about your like junk literally drawer. organized by little divider category it's, junk drawer. So it's not, I, I didn't, to be like, to be clear, I didn't go and spend a ton of money on organizers for my junk drawer. I literally used um, old Tupperware that's like my junky old plastic Tupperware just to literally keep, so my pens aren't flying around and like the tools aren't flying around. All the pens are together in a little old junky Tupperware. So it was super cheap, but it's more functional because I don't have to like dig through my junk drawer to find my pen. It's just the pens right there. There's like, there's literally just like no disorganized place in your home. I don't know. I just feel like it doesn't every chef like sometimes just like eat, you know, McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? Like it well, doesn't every so expert have like their thing that's like not My perfect. thing about that is that I have not spent a ton of money on the fancy products. Mm, fair like enough. I haven't gone out and bought all of the beautiful bins and the baskets in my closet. Like I have figured out how to fold things to optimize them so I can see everything and they're all in a really nice stack, but I didn't go out and spend $700 on baskets. Do your clients like to buy the fancy stuff? Some do and some don't. Mm. I have I have such a wide range of clients. Um, some people will literally, I'll never even meet them face to face. I'll meet a housekeeper or a secret, like a, a personal assistant um, or a house manager. Um, and they'll literally say, here's the credit card, make it look amazing. I'm like, great. That's, that's fun. Wow. Um, and I can make my dreams come true and make it beautiful. And then I also have clients who are like, I want to spend $300. Where can we, where is the very most important best place to spend those $300 on product, mm. you know, and they're both super fun and they're both very different challenges. Um, and I have everything in between some people, I mean, we live in a city with a lot of very wealthy people who just want it to look beautiful and be super functional. And that's great. And then there's also people who don't want to spend all that money, who just want it to be super functional. And that's great too. Um, yeah. What was the original question? Um, if whether or not your clients typically opt for the really expensive, fancy organizational tools, both, I have, I have a super wide range of clients. Nice. Yeah. This is kind of a strange question, but I get it. And we got it on, uh, from our audience. What do you do with clothes that you've worn? So they're not clean, but they're not laundry basket, like jeans and stuff. Yeah. So I have a lot of these clothes, like, like the jeans. Don't I, <laughs> right. Yeah. Like my jeans I'll wear between five to 10 times, depending on what I'm doing in them, um, before I wash them. And like you can kind of answer the question yourself. Like if your jeans are dirty enough that you're not willing to put them back on the stack of jeans, like they probably need to be washed. So they should probably go in the hamper. But if you feel like they're tidy enough that they don't need to be laundered, then for me personally, I feel comfortable folding them back and putting them back on that pile of jeans. Mm. Talking on wardrobe specifically, I have figured out a way to spend very, 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 very little money on clothes in this city. 
So a colleague of mine, um, her name is Sandy Buskin. She's another organizer in the city. Um, her company is called Dear Mess, and mm-hmm. she has started something called the Clothing Swap, mm. which is revolutionary. So she basically, once a season, will have, she invites between 30, 40, 50 women um, to this event once a season. And typically like between 15 to 20 people will end up showing up and she asks everyone to go through their wardrobes and bring clothes, shoes, bags, housewares, kitchen supplies, books, and literally everything in your home that you're no longer using. And we all bring it to her house and her apartment. And she literally sets up a store in her apartment, like shoe racks, clothing racks, uh, it's like a goodwill in her apartment, and we literally just trade clothes, trade books, trade shoes, trade bags, and it's it has become the most incredible event that I have saved, no kidding, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars um, just by reduce, reuse, and recycle um, and setting up this event. And I've networked with so many incredible women in the city that I've met some of my best friends at these events that she hosts. Um, yeah, having a clothing swap is it, it has revolutionized my wardrobe. I would say about 70% of all of my clothes, these pants are from a swap. (laughs) Look at that. Um, We used to have, um, uh, yeah, like once a quarter, uh, clothing swap brunches with my girlfriend. Yes. It's amazing. It's the best. And I've gotten so many like beautiful things that I'm like, are you sure you don't want this anymore? She's like, yeah, girl, take it. Like, Incredible things. Um, So that has really helped me curb my spending significantly um, in the clothing department and shoes and bags and stuff like that. I've gotten like artwork and luggage. Luggage. Yes. I've gotten like amazing, amazing things and like good things. I've gotten like Kate Spade and like like legit stuff that I'm like, why are you giving this away? I want to live in the like mind of someone who's giving that away, but you know what? You'd be surprised. But yeah. 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 They're like, oh, I got it at Housing Works. Like, I got it on the cheap in the first place, and it's like not my style anymore. Or it doesn't fit me anymore. Like, how about it? Go with grace. Take it. Wow. Love it. You follow apartment therapy? Yeah. Does it ever just make you feel like, wow? I'm just yeah, like, all the time. A little bad about yourself, Loki. <laughs> I mean, well, it's something that I, that's one of those things that I follow apartment therapy. I'm like, okay, what can I take out of there? That like out of the beautiful picture, I can take this one little thing and apply it to my apartment to make it a little bit better. Yeah. No, I'm with that. The one thing that I always see that I like love, but I'm like, how does this work in practice, honey, is people who have like Turkish rugs in their kitchens. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that thing, maybe it's pretty for the day you took this photo. Those are people that store sweaters in their oven. Yes. It's gotta be because I don't know if I I had a fabric rug in my kitchen that thing be would cute. be gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. No, not cute. It'd be I gross. don't. Yeah. I cook way too much. Yeah. Same. But I will say machine washable rugs have really mm. changed yeah. my life in that regard. Yeah. And also like, to be fair, if you want the rug look like there are like jute, there are other materials yeah, you can get yeah. that are not like fabric, but like yeah. every freaking kitchen on apartment therapy has <laughs> yeah. this like beautiful yeah. ornate vintage Turkish rug, yeah. like right under the counter. And right. I'm like, yeah, those are people that are not ew. using those kitchens. <laughs> Gotta be. So we have something that we do for every episode of the Financial Confessions, where we ask our uh, guests to answer some rapid fire questions about their money. You may not be super used to talking about money in a a public context, uh, so you're always welcome to skip, uh, but we encourage you to to give a crack at them all. (laughs) What is the big financial secret of your industry? And I think it would be even more interesting than just the organization to do just interiors in general, interior design, decor, organization, that whole industry. I think, I think it's the fact that Instagram and all of the like websites and stuff, better homes and gardens and all those, all those like, sorry, AD. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Um, sorry. (laughs) All those ones that are very aspirational make you think that you have to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to achieve that. Um, where you don't like, I've mentioned this several times where you can say, okay, I love that look. How can I pull one thing out of it to make my place a little bit better and spend $25 versus $2,500. Um, it's figuring out how to kind of narrow in 
on what you like about that. Like, is it all of the greenery? Great. Buy a plant. Don't like buy a forest, buy a plant. Like, (laughs) do you, you know, like, do you love that beautiful open shelving? Like in a kitchen, this is one thing that I've done um, with clients. People love the open shelving. Like if you love that open shelving look, you don't have to tear out your entire kitchen. Take the doors off of your shelves. Right. Open, that's open shelving. The dust though. How is there not a ton of dust on all of that stuff? You have to dust more. Man, <laughs> like, I don't know. It just, but the, maybe so open shelves are not for you. <laughs> like, I don't it know. It depends. It depends what you want, you know? Yeah. Cause I have a bar cart and a glassware shelf in my dining room and that is just like constant. The same. dusting. Yeah. The constant. dusting. And yes. Same. We have a glass bar cart that's like brass. Yeah. And like the every dust. couple days I also have a cat that it's just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's so Sorry. true. Yeah. Also, I will say sometimes the like greenery in those photos is aspirational. Sometimes though, there's so many plants in those rooms. I'm like, is it a terrarium in there? <laughs> right. Like it looks moist. <laughs> <laughs> like the photos are not. That's what you're going for. Like also like, on your, on your point though, like what you often are so coveting about that space is that it's so clean and yes. so organized yes. and everything is in its place, which yes. is something anyone can recreate with what you have exactly today. 100%. The mess is half the stress. It's your choice. It is your choice. It's your choice. What do you invest in versus what are you cheap about? And in, perhaps, you know, in home goods. Do you mean like in my personal life or, yeah. oh gosh, um, I, I invest in like major experiences and vacations. Yeah. Um, I, I'm like very interested in other cultures and food. I just, I love eating food and like going to other countries and eating that. God, I love food. It's so good. Um, (laughs) eating other cultures, food and like eating things that I'm like, I don't know what that is, but I'm going to eat it. Um, I love that. I love that experience and that excitement. Um, and I'm ironically living in one of the most exciting food cities in the world. I don't eat out that much. Mm. Um, I cook a ton. Me and my fiance cook a ton. We love cooking. And that is like one of the biggest, simplest ways to save money in this city. Um, that I know so many people and like eating out for lunch, everybody, like everyone eats out for lunch. It's so easy. And there's so much amazing food in this city and that's great. And I'll do that like once a week versus four days a week. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, still, I'm not, not eating out. Like I'm still enjoying the fruits of living in an incredible food city, but I'm also making that choice to not having those little daily luxuries and saving my money for like a huge mega experience twice a year. Yeah. That's what about of... in your home? What are you cheap about and what do you invest in, in your home goods? Um, cheap in my home. Um, my fiance is very, uh, handy. So he like builds stuff, which mm. is great. He built our, um, we stand. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we stand. We stand. <laughs> oh I still God. don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's like, it's like a like thing that people say, like when someone says something, <laughs> What is happening? Like someone, a stan is like a really, really intense fan. And okay. like, so if you're saying we stan, you're like, we love that. We're all about that. Okay. We oh, stan. Okay. 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 Yeah. So he loves building things, um, which has saved us a bunch of money. He built the most incredible um, TV, like media stand. And he like planed the wood and took the pipes and like painted them and created this thing that looks like it's a million dollars. And he literally made it from old reclaimed wood and pipes. Love that. Um, yeah. And so what do you spend a lot of money on home, home goods wise? Um, comfy furniture and bed. The bed, we spent a lot of money on our bed because you spend a third of your life laying mm-hmm. down in it. And... Like having a stressful New York life, stressful life anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are having a stressful life. Like you need a bed that you're going to be able to get quality sleep in. If you're getting crappy sleep, like that affects your life in every aspect of everything. So I think the bed is like 100% the place to spend. What has been your best investment and why? Investing in myself and like, not necessarily like financially investing in myself, but investing in like 
myself knowing that I could be a small business owner and believing in myself and trusting in myself and investing in my own future of like wanting to create my own path. Mm. Um, that was really scary to do. Um, coming from like financial stability and having a full-time paying job and like having something that was like easy in the bag, like it was good. It was like fine. Like I knew I was doing well. And then being like, okay, I'm going to make the choice to invest in myself and like keep my fingers crossed that that's going to work out. But like, it was the best decision I ever made in my entire life. Um, deciding to be my own boss and like write my own story and like forge my own path has been like incredibly rewarding. Um, and just like, it was the best decision I ever could have made. That's awesome. What has been your biggest money mistake and why? Um, I think my biggest money mistake was not knowing when to fight for my worth. Mm -hmm. Um, not knowing. So there's been times when I had signed contracts, um, and the contract very shortly after having been signed only a few months into a job was basically ripped apart and said like, we're not going to honor that contract. You're going to do this now. And I didn't know what my rights were and I didn't know how to stand up for myself. And I basically just kind of was like scared of not having a job. So I just went along with it because I was like, well, I need to keep paying my rent. Um, and even though it was like not the best decision and it, it ended up snowballing into like a whole series of other issues and problems, um, financially and emotionally, <laughs> like having to deal with that and like take that on. Um, now in hindsight, like knowing how to stand up for myself and fight for my rights, um, when it comes to contracts and what I'm worth financially, um, was a huge, huge, like come to realization for me. Right there with you. <laughs> what is your biggest current money insecurity? Uh, having no income. <laughs> um, Rona. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, that's Rona. Hashtag true life. Um, yeah, I have no income right now. Um, and that is scary. Um, Indeed. being, being a home organizer, I, I'm literally, it, it couldn't be more of an intimate job. Like I am in people's everything. Um, and that's the last thing that people <laughs> want is a stranger coming in and touching literally everything in their home right now. Um, which I also don't want to touch everything in people's homes right now. So yeah, I haven't been able to work in over two months, which is, that's just the reality of the situation. Um, yeah. That's well, listen, <laughs> I think, I think because people are spending so much more time in their homes now when it gets a little bit more open, I think people are going to really want Yeah. This. Well, and that's like the flip side of the coin is that because of what I do being a home organizer and people being so like inundated with their own stuff right now, I've had so much interest in yeah. my company, even though I can't actually do the work right now a lot of people are like when are you going to be available can you please come as, well, as soon good. as possible yeah so there is a light at the end of the tunnel for whenever whenever I mean who knows when the world will be able to slowly start reopening when it's safe and you know a viable option um but whenever that day does come when we're able to do it safely hopefully I think people are going to have like serious reckonings with their stuff yeah. <laughs> and like they're going to want help with it. So what has been the financial habit that has helped you the most? Um, when I had my first job, when I was 10 years old, I was a babysitter and I would get paid $5 for the evening. Um, <laughs> and I would, Whoa, was, they were ripping you off Tough times in Wisconsin in the nineties. Um, I mean, I was like 10, um, <laughs> okay. you know, 10, $5 for a 10 year old is like, also, but like, should a 10 year old be babysitting? <laughs> a lot of questions here. <laughs> There's a lot of follow up questions. Um, not a lot of options in Wisconsin. Um, so I would have this little notebook and I would literally write down like, I made $5 today. 
And when I would go to the candy store and spend $2 on candy, I would write, I spent $2 today. And I literally learned how to balance a checkbook when I was like 10 years old. Fun fact, hey millennials, have you ever heard of a checkbook? <laughs> um, that's a thing that used to exist. So learning how to balance what's coming in and what's going out, I was taught that at such a young age to be aware of every dollar that's coming in and every dollar that's coming out. And I've continued that habit through balancing an actual physical checkbook when I was in high school and now having a digital record that is way easier, thank you technology, um, that I can literally every single day, I open that app and I say, great, here's my spending, here's what I've, what, here's what's coming in, here's what's going out. Um, that has been just having an awareness and of what's coming in and coming out has been a huge check in the pros column. Um, also turning off automatic payments for my credit card. Um, oh yeah. Oh, it, interesting. Yeah. I gotta keep them on for me. I see for me, it's, I, I have automatic payments for my other bills for my gas and electric. Absolutely. Like pay that baby. Um, but when it comes to my credit card, that's, those are things that I'm choosing to spend money on. Mm. So I like to be hyper aware of what I'm choosing to spend my money on and how much I've spent that much or how much I've spent that month and being aware of like, okay, this month I spent X amount of dollars. I need to pay X amount of dollars. Cause for me, at least if I had that on an automatic, the credit card just becomes a free for all. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, having that awareness and being held accountable to pay that every month so I'm aware of what I'm spending has been a huge help for me. When did you first feel successful and what does that word mean to you? I first felt successful as a small business owner with my, as my first client. I'm, ah, I'm, adorable. I'm a person that I love to celebrate the tiny victories. If you're, if you wait to celebrate, like when you win the game, that's, you're going to be waiting for so long. Like why not celebrate every single tiny victory along the way? So when I had my very first client, I was like, I did it. And, and he wrote this amazing review for me. And I was just like, I couldn't believe it. And it like, it shot me on a trajectory of celebrating every single client because amazing. honestly, as a small business owner, every client is a success. That is very true. Um, Cause you never know like when that next client is going to be like, I'm very lucky. I'm in a place now where like, it's lined up, but yeah, in the beginning I was, I was celebrating every single, every single one. Well, thank you so much for being here, Joel. Yeah. Where can people go to find more of you? Um, people can find me on Instagram at Sage Organization, as well as my website is sageorganization.com. So we talked so much today about kind of getting our lives in order and making it look the way we want it to look. And one of the best tools that I have ever found for organizing what can be a very, very messy financial life is the app Mint. I have been using Mint for over seven years now. And as someone who for a very long time completely avoided even just really looking at my checking account on a regular basis because it gave me anxiety. It got me over the hump of feeling like money was something to be scared of and got me intimately familiar with how I was spending, what I was bringing in, and just how to manage my finances on a day-to-day -day basis. I could set a budget and set goals and come in under budget and plan what to do with my savings and all of that. I've been using Mint for many, many years, well before there even was a TFD, so I could not recommend it more if you want to get started organizing your finances and taking control of them. You can find them at the link in our description or our show notes, and don't forget that it's free, so what do you have to lose? As always, guys, thank you so much for joining us on the Financial Confessions. It was lovely to spend the afternoon with you, and we will see you next Monday. Bye.